Welcome to the end of March. Can you believe it? Oh my gosh, it's a fourth of the year gone already. Thank goodness I'm back in my studio or I would be freaking out at this point in time. I am here today to show you where I am with my daily creative practice. This is Mary Beth Shaw from Stencil Girl Products. And thanks for coming along on this journey. I've got to say that I am pretty stoked that I am actually keeping up with the daily creative practice. I am not going to represent that I work on it daily because I don't. I work on it more weekendish. So probably every weekend I work on, you know, a spread or a couple pages. And by the end of the month I am finished. And that is fairly exciting for me because you know what? I've never done this sort of thing before. So I'm going to turn the camera and show you how horrifying I look when I get out of bed and I start filming first thing. <laughs> but let's be real, right? This is a no makeup 62 year old face and this is just what you get. All right, so talking about the book. Um, you know, I took this class from Andrea Shevelo. If you've been following along, you know that that's how I learned to make the book. And it's made out of manila folders. And I had previously taken a class from Tiffany, Tiffany Golf Smith, and she did a book out of manila folders. It was like those two classes kind of in a row for me because I don't take that many classes. And I did those, and they both had the same manila folder substrate and I will have to report that I love working on manila folder. I never would have dreamed that it would take all the paint that I throw at it and the pencil and the collage and this and that but boy you gesso it and it just holds up beautifully. So I am here to endorse manila folders. Go figure, right? I'm going to turn the camera back around and show you my pages and tell you how I made them. All right, so the outside spread is the one that's the gatefold. And this one, I was experimenting with a lot of new products. I was using, you know, this came on the heels of the recording of my splash class, Make a Splash, that I'm teaching with Ray Missigman. And I am continuing my exploration of watercolor and all of the other mixed media delights. I've got Karen Dash, I've got Dina Wakely, Glossy Spray, I've got Jessus, I've got Posca Pens, I've got Collage. I have all the things in here and I am totally loving the idea of putting all these things together. For me, the one thing that guides me is that they're all water soluble products. I'm not putting any oil based products in here except maybe a little bit of oil pencil and truly I don't think there's enough oil in the oil pencil to affect it in that oil and water kind of way. So anyway, this is the opening spread. This vintage stuff, you know, what my studio disaster taught me is you do not need to save these things because something will happen and you might lose them. So I'm using all the vintage things. I'm using stamps. I'm, um, I've had people give me things and they were things that I might not have collected myself and it's kind of fun. I've immediately put them into collage. So paint chips remain my friends. Love paint chips. And then the front and the back is just pretty simple paint. The next spread was more a teal orientation on the front and the back. Again, I used a stamp that um, Cher had given me, Salvatore, and she brought over a bunch of supplies. She lives near me, and it was so sweet of her to share things, and she's a sharing girl, that Cher. Yup, yup, yup. Anyway, here's a piece of the, um, the paper, the Asian, I believe they're prayer papers, or I'm not quite sure. And then here's the part I cut, I did a little fussy cut out of some collage paper. Here is a um, um, 
just like a pickup of some paint. Like I had paint and I just slapped something down and picked it up. A lot of things in here. I remain challenged, very challenged, by collage and paint and how to put it together and make it look interesting. This is a piece of tissue over here that had this black on it and it just went totally seamless in the background. I just love that. This inside page, all right, if you haven't seen them yet, Judy Woods is doing stencils for our company. They're on the website. Shh, it's a secret. It's not very closely guarded anymore because Judy and I have been teasing it out pretty, um, pretty aggressively, but Judy has made some wonderful stencils. I am part of her starts workshop and her starts group. I find her education to be exactly the kind of education I need as an artist 20 years in looking to shape up and shake up, I should say, my practice. So this is one of the little masks and there, there's another one. It's, I think it's this whole thing as a mask. They're just too cool, too cool. All right, so look at this down here. This is a piece of packing tape. You might have seen my reel over on Instagram where I showed how I use packing tape. So here's what I do is, and really it's just that clear tape you use for shipping. You know, it's real sticky, it's clear, it's glossy. All right, so you have your paint palette, and if you're finished painting your palette, your jelly plate, whatever it is, you can pick up the paint with a piece of the tape. This is the one I showed on the reel. So all you do is just go like this, and the stickiness of the tape picks up the paint, and you're left with this super cool looking collage part that you could never create any other way. And that's the sort of thing I love incorporating into my work. So I have a piece of it down here. Well, okay, so I didn't want the glossy side and I was too lazy to paint it with matte medium like I suggest in my reel. So I put the glossy side down against the receiving part and I glued it down there. I used some double-sided tape and then I was worried about whether it's going to stay or not because sometimes it's so glossy you can just peel it right off. And I had you know, something over here kept popping up too. So anyway, I took it down to my sewing machine and I just did a quick one line stitch over here to hold it down. I think it adds some visual interest there as well. So there is that spread. And then the next one, you know I do love my orange, right? <laughs> Cannot get enough orange. I was tracing within a letter stencil down here. And if you do it in such a way, it almost doesn't even look like letters. It just looks like marks. I mean, you can see that there are letters there, but I love how that works. So when I worked this, I worked it open like this way, and then I worked this way. So that's how I normally work a spread. And again, I used things that people gave to me because I wanted to honor their gifts and use those things in my work because it always reminds me of them. And then this inside part, this was a little piece of, I don't know, some kind of stick or something that I was having trouble getting to stick. And so again, I did a little bit of a sewing machine line down there. So that is what I do when I have things that don't want to stick in my journal. Sometimes I'll just take a couple holes and just take a few um, hand stitches over top. But in this case, I did the actual sewing machine part and I stitched it down. And it's very interesting because I had this line here and the sewing just echoes that line. It's, I feel like when I work in my journals, it is so frequently synchronistic how these things occur. And the fact that, you know, I wasn't thinking, oh, there's a line there, I'm gonna put a line here. I was thinking, oh, this piece is coming off the page, I need to stitch it down and I'm too lazy to do 
hand stitching today. So I just ran downstairs and threw it under the machine. And that's the kind of synchronicity that I love. I try not to think too hard when I'm involved in these pages and just see what comes up. So three months in the year and I am still doing it. I'm so happy to be able to share these with you. I'm so happy to be back in my studio and stay tuned to see what other shenanigans I have scheduled for this year. Thank you for watching.